Hello, so I've learned some really cool stuff about modeling um, soft bodies and clothes. And I mean soft bodies as in uh, things like people or animals rather than simulated physics. Um, so I thought what I would do is I would go and make, before Christmas comes, I'd make a tutorial where I model up a character and clothes for the character, do the whole thing with rigging and constraints and all of that joy. Um, so this is going to be a bit long, but uh, at the end we should have some really, really nice results. One of the uh, biggest things we're going to be doing is clothing, which is classically something that ends up looking terrible, because most people use either a mesh bulge system where they just take the base mesh and shape it a little bit to make it look like clothes, or they use a secondary layer system where they clone the mesh and then delete the pieces that aren't part of the clothes and then try and expand it so that it covers the underlying body mesh. Uh, and that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a different method. Um, but in order to get that far, we first have to build the body, and that's what we're going to start doing in this episode. Now normally I would use some skin modeling to do that, but uh, skin modeling, I've used it before a lot, so I figured what I would do is I would do another method just for variety's sake. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, uh, face loop or, or uh, edge loop in this case uh, modeling. And this is different from face from uh, skin modeling because we're going to be building up each of the loops individually. And I'm doing this without any kind of um, uh, background image. We're just going to be painting with these edge loops. We're going to be sketching up with these edge loops and putting them in the right spot um, and not bothering to worry too much about um, uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna fix up the exact positioning of all this stuff later, so we're gonna build a neutral um, a neutral pilot model, uh, someone who could be used as a mech pilot, and that means we want a small character because there's no reason for a mech pilot to be big and hulking. Uh, I'm gonna make the default character female, uh, and then allow for either a male variant or a shape key modification, but either way. Um, we're going to go ahead and model the character. And I'm starting at the waist. So this part here is the waist, and then this part here is the rib cage. Okay? And you can sort of see that we're going to have a belly here, and then we're going to have the chest and the legs. So uh, we need to keep going. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and put the neck here. And as you can see, I'm just kind of sketching with these lines. I'm not really trying very hard to make them fit perfectly. So now we need a couple of new kinds of lines, uh, sorry, new kinds of loops. And one of those is going to be these circles that aren't going to pass over the x-axis, but instead are going to be small enough to be entirely on one, at one side or the other. If you can't see, I've got the mirror modification up here. Oh, speaking of which, let's go ahead and turn on screencast keys before I forget. So these lines are gonna, these uh, particular ones are gonna be a lot of different pieces, but we're gonna start by making them the thigh element, which we'll put here, and then we'll clone it and move it up, rotate Z90, nope, sorry, rotate Y90, and rotate Y90, and now it's the arm element, which we'll put here and shrink. All right, so, um, we have to decide how much detail we're going to put into the character's chest, and this is a matter of um, great dispute because uh, it essentially uh, it really depends on how uh, important the shape of the chest is, and that depends in turn on exactly what sort of character you're going for. Now, I'm not going for a particularly sexualized character, so we're going to leave our chest area with a moderate amount of detail, the same the same level of detail that you would use for a male chest, um, just because I don't really need to have uh, the, the high level of definition. But as much as I'm saying that even a male chest has more definition than just flat area. So we do need more complexity in the chest. We're just going to duplicate this and bring it in like so, and like this. 
and that's probably going to end up being much too much density uh, just because it has the full 12 points. In fact, it's going to be too much density here as well. Uh, but we can modify those later when we start to bring everything together. So there are a couple of pieces left that we're going to need to model. And the biggest one is definitely going to be the whole center line. Um, and we're going to just go ahead and select, there we go, select this and go around the center line. So um, that's the waist, so the belly should come out and then in and then down and then back and then back. And then this is going to be a medium poly model, perhaps 10,000 um, or 12,000 faces. Uh, so we'll go ahead and I, I consider that to be medium poly. I know that for some people that would be considered pretty high poly. Um, it really depends on what you do um, and what sort of device you're releasing for. For a computer, with, with if, if, you're, if you're not planning on having a whole lot of characters, I generally find that's the right number. So, all right, so there we are. Oh, that's way too close. How did I get so close? Back up. All right, so we've got a center line going here, and uh, this chest might be the wrong. I mean, this uh, rib cage might be too high. So let's just. Well, for some reason, it selects everything. Well, whatever. That's all. That's all okay. I don't really care. And then this goes through here. And it connects up to here. Actually, that requires an extra. So we've just sketched the character up using nothing but lines. And as you can see, the character's got like a little bit of a scaffold for her. But she doesn't have any kind of actual uh, shape because we haven't actually extended any of these. So we're going to go ahead and start extending them. And the first thing we're going to do is add in a point here because I forgot one. There we go. And uh, that's going to end up being connecting these guys here. So we're just going to connect these guys up. And then we're going to put a crease through the middle, and then we're going to connect them up here, and connect them up here, connect them up here, and connect them up here. Now you've got a lot of options when it comes to the belly, um, because there's going to be a, a, various, a varied amount of definition at the edge of the belly, depending on how uh, whether your character is a little bit chunky or whether they have a washboard ab sort of situation. It really changes the shape that you want your stuff to naturally fall into. Um, we're going to go ahead and give our character um, not not washboard abs, but we're going to make it so that they're not they're not going to be noticeably chunky. They live in space. They don't have a whole lot of um, uh, they don't have a whole lot of luxuries. So uh, we're going to go ahead and presume that they get a lot of exercise because they're monitored every day for health purposes and all of that stuff. And uh, we're just going to finish up here. And down here, we're going to go ahead and fill this in. So what I've got here, in case you can't tell, is that this is the um, the hip that will actually do the rotating when we rotate out the bone. So uh, basically, this part down here is the thigh, which is below that. But both of those are probably too high detail. We'll probably have to edit those. But for now, we'll just connect them up. All right, you can see that I've got a really stretched, um, I've got a really stretched vert there, so I'm going to just bring it into line. We don't need to stretch it quite that much, and uh, split this up so we can connect it up without any difficulty. Um, this is actually going to be a problematic area, depending on how much detail we need here. Um, but that was a mistake on my part. The problem is that uh, the butt doesn't doesn't have the same uh, shape as the rest of the back, so you do need to add a topology there, just like we did on the chest. And again, uh, how much detail you put in and what way really depends on how important it is that your character have a nice butt. Um, our character is not that important, but we still want the the butt to not look horrible in terms of uh, bunching up or or screwing up when the animations happen. We'd much rather prefer it to um, exist properly, and that requires us to have a little bit of extra topology. So, oh, I've got clipping turned on. Oh good, shouting is starting. Yeah, flip. 
and this will be the back, and the back has this sort of situation. And then we just connect up here. That's obviously going to be too little, so let's split it up like so. And um, actually, that's wrong. It's not too little, it's just that it's too low. I've got the wrong shape here, so I need to grab these guys and bring them all up like this. Obviously that ended up being pretty chunky down at the bottom side, so we're going to shape this uh, a little bit later such that it's not so chunky. Um, I don't have anything against... Uh, I don't need all of my characters to be skinny, but this particular character really should be. So we're going to just shape this back into a skinnier profile. Like so. Anyhow, I think that's all I should do for the first episode, um, just because of time constraints and not boring everyone to death. In the next episode, we will finish off the basic topology of the torso, and then we'll move on to the uh, extremities and maybe the head.